So let's visualize the Fourier transform using an example. And I've got here a time domain signal, that is a square wave that goes between zero and one and repeats itself. And the Fourier transform tells us that any function can be generated by adding together sinusoids with the right amplitudes, phases, and frequencies. And the Fourier transform of this square wave here is shown below with the blue bars. I've shown a green sync function over the top to show the envelope of these bars. But this is a periodic function, so the Fourier transform only contains discrete frequencies, the blue bars showing us which ones. So for example, at zero frequency, which is a constant offset, there's a component because the time domain waveform is offset from an average of zero. It's actually averaged around 0.5. Uh, then there's a component at frequency of 0.5, a component which is negative at 1.5, and a component at 2.5, and so on off the graph. Now let's look at what these mean and think about how to construct them. So now I'm going to show this component here. So this is the zero frequency component, and it, in the time domain, that represents a straight line. It's constant for all time, and it's a value one half. Uh, the next component here I'm going to show, I'm going to plot up the top. This is a sinusoid, so it's centered around zero. It's the yellow curve. And you can see that it makes sense that that sinusoid there would play quite a role in the construction of the blue waveform. Uh, it has the same period, so it makes sense that there would be this component here. Um, of course, it's uh, when we add the red to the yellow, it's going to shift the yellow up um, and it's going to start to look like the blue waveform, but it's not exactly the square wave yet. So we need to add other sinusoids to it to start to make it look more like the blue waveform. Uh, it turns out we don't put any of the frequency at one here, um, but at 1.5, uh, so that's nothing from one. And at 1.5, we need a negative component. So at the zero time offset here, this is a negative uh, and then it, uh, oscillates at this higher frequency of 1.5 hertz. Notice that uh, it's sort of, I think intuitively, I hope you can see it makes sense. This, uh, when we're trying to match up to the blue, we're trying to construct the blue. If we add the yellow to the green at these transition times where the blue transitions, they've both got this uh, gradient, which is in the correct direction, which is in the direction of the gradient of, that we're trying to generate. Uh, we need to keep adding more and more to it. The more of them we add with, the, with that correct gradient there, the steeper and steeper the slope is gonna be when we add them all up. We'll see that in a minute. Let's look across this uh, time period though, where this one is a peak, uh, the green is a negative, but that's okay. It's, when you add them together, it's gonna to pull this peak down a little bit, but it's also that you need where the yellow is down here, it's a bit lower, you need it to be going higher and the green is gonna to help to add it to go higher so that you try to get it flat across the band. And so that's what we're gonna be seeing. So the next component at two is zero, the next component at 2.5 is shown here in magenta color and so on. Now I'm gonna show them when they actually add together. So here we've got the same time domain, I've just zoomed in the scale to show from zero to one and we're showing the zero component here, zero frequency component. Now, when we add the 0.5 frequency to it, we're going to get this waveform here. This yellow one here is the addition of the zero plus the 0.5. Then we get, when we add in the 1.5 here, we're getting a waveform here in purple, which is starting to, again, as I said, look flat across the band and has a steeper slope. Uh, when we add the next one in at two, there was nothing. And so we add the one in at 2.5 and again, even more flat across the slope and even uh, across the, uh, the flat area and an even steeper slope. And so now I'm going to uh, not keep the others on, but just keep showing what happens when I add more terms, which are off the scale below. But we can see that the more terms you add, the flatter it gets across the main Air, uh, the main region, time region, and the steeper the slope gets, and you get closer and closer to the square wave. So hopefully this has given you more insights into the Fourier transform and how it is an addition of sinusoids that can end up resulting in any time domain function. In this case, it was square, which seemed to be one of the most difficult because it had these square corners, and how can you do that 
from sinusoids. Well, you're going to need to have an infinite number of sinusoids to get it fully square, um, but uh, at least this gives you the insight for the finite case. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a th thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Subscribe to the channel for more videos. Check out the web page in the description below. You'll find a categorized listing of all the videos on the channel. And you can check out my Instagram feed and Facebook page where I'm on a quest to find signals in our everyday lives.